What if I told you there was a way to save hundreds of orbs while building your favorite units with the most premium skills in the game? Thanks to Rearm Heroes, you can do exactly that. In this video, I will be teaching you how to use Skill Duplication Trick with Rearm Heroes, showing you how many orbs you can save using this trick. I'll be breaking down the best fodder to duplicate with each rearmed hero, and lastly, I'll be talking about the best rearmed heroes to use this trick with. Before we start, I want to put out a massive disclaimer. This trick will not magically add orbs to your account. This trick will save you orbs building your favorites by investing orbs efficiently. It will cost orbs up front, but you will save hundreds of orbs each time you perform this trick. I just want to make sure that's very clear. So what is the skill duplication trick, and how does it work? Unlike any other hero type in the game, when you inherit a skill from a rearmed hero, they do not disappear from your barracks, which means you can still use that hero. But the thing that makes a trick actually work is that anytime you merge a rearmed hero together, all their fodder gets refreshed. So what this means is that if I have a rearmed Ophelia that has inherited times plus four from let's say a brave Soren, every time I merge Ophelia, I can inherit times plus four to another hero again. This is how you effectively duplicate skills. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. Your goal when duplicating skills is to always get four premium skills from each merge of Rearmed Hero. For example, every time you inherit from Rearmed Ophelia, you could get Special Spiral 4, Times Pulse 4, Flare, and then either her Arcane Weapon or another premium Tier 4 skill like Magic Null Follow. And this is the same for every Rearmed Hero. Essentially, every rearmed hero should act as a bank of premium skills that you can hand out to your favorites. Ideally, they can give a hero an entirely premium kit with one inherit, though that isn't always possible. With the basics out of the way, let's go step by step through the process. The first step is to choose which rearmed hero you'll be using to duplicate skills. All of them can do this trick, but the skills they can inherit depends on their movement types. So a unit like rearmed Ingrid, who is a flyer, cannot duplicate infantry skills because she cannot inherit them. This is very important to remember and one of the major reasons I am so biased toward rearmed infantry units as they have the most available fodder to duplicate. For our example, I'm going to be choosing rearmed Ingrid. Once you've picked, let's move on to the second step, which is to determine what skills you want to duplicate. Now this is very important. When you are choosing the skills you want to inherit, you are looking for skills that have their tier 3 version accessible. Ideally, free to play accessible. Technically, you can use rearmed heroes to duplicate any skill you want, but because skill inheritance is currently limited to four, in order to get maximum value, these are the skills you want to duplicate. For example, a good skill to duplicate is Soaring Guidance from Summer Ivy. The reason for this is because the tier three version, Flyer Guidance, is easily available. You can spend 100 Grails and 20k Feathers and get a copy from Trevon. It's also accessible from other units like Bohanoka or Spring Marissa meaning you shouldn't have any problem getting your hands on it. Another major thing to consider when choosing which skills to inherit is what skills the rearmed hero comes with. Most rearmed heroes have at least one premium tier 4 skill, which can be a great option to duplicate as it doesn't require investing another 5 star unit. Also, don't forget that you can always inherit the arcane weapon as well, which can count as one of your 4 skills. So because Ingrid comes with guard bearing 4, which is a premium melee flyer skill, let's use her to duplicate skills melee flyers would want. Just to make this easier for everyone, I have an infographic up with a list of the best skills, in my opinion, to inherit to Ingrid. I'll have more of these available for every rearmed hero later in the video. Because I know the meta, I'm going to choose Guidance 4, Soaring Guidance 4, Attack Speed Unity, and finally Guard Bearing 4, which naturally comes on Ingrid. What we want to do is inherit all the tier 3 versions of these skills to Ingrid. So we'll go grab a copy of Trevant, and we'll grab a copy of Brian Larum, who has Guidance 3, from the Grail Shop. We'll spend 20k feathers on each of them to make them 5 stars. Then we'll upgrade a copy of Kent to 5 stars to get attack speed bond 3. Once that's complete, it's time to sacrifice all the valuable 5 stars. So in this case, we'll sacrifice a rearmed Tana, grabbing attack speed unity and guidance 4, and then we will also sacrifice a summer ivy to get soaring guidance. While doing this, I always recommend grabbing any other skills you can, but don't go overboard if it costs too much. For the case of Ivy, we could grab Stillwater 4 if we want to kill a tea time tail 2, though that isn't necessary considering Ingrid will most likely be used on melee flyers. Once all the 5 stars are killed, Ingrid is now complete and ready to be inherited from. I'm sure some of you are thinking, you just killed 2 premium 5 stars for that. You're right, but remember, all these skills can be duplicated. Every time we merge Ingrid, we are essentially getting another copy of Riam Tana and Summer Ivy, which quickly adds up to insane value. Let's move on to the final 2 steps. 
So you want to hit inherit all these premium skills from Ingrid to my project, Ninja Har. So the next step we need to do is make sure Har has all the tier 3 versions of the skill we want. So we will once again grab a copy of Trevant, grab a copy of Bridal Larum, spend 20k feathers on each of them to make them 5 stars, and then we'll upgrade a copy of Kent to 5 stars to get attack speed bond 3 again. Now typically, Ninja Har wouldn't want attack speed unity, but we're just going to do it for the example, okay? The other thing we have to do is sacrifice an Anand, a Hell, or a Summer Ingrid to give Ninja Har Guard Bearing 3. In this case, we'll kill Anand. After that, we go to Skill Inheritance, and we will inherit all of rearmed Ingrid skills to Har. And there you go. That is how the process will go. Now when you get another copy of rearmed Ingrid, you'll just take her to the merge screen, and you'll merge the two Ingrids together, and the red sword will glow again. Meaning this Ingrid can once again be inherited from. So then you can do the second part of the process all over again, but this time with a different flyer of your choice. This trick, once set up, will allow you to give your favorites entirely premium kits at a much lower price. And don't forget, you get to keep the rearmed heroes, which means all the premium skills you invest into them will make them that much stronger. In my case now, rearmed Ingrid has a very meta build. The other thing to consider though is which rearmed heroes are worth merging and which ones aren't. Not every rearmed hero was born equal, as some rearmed heroes have better movement types to duplicate fodder, and also some rearmed heroes are just very strong, while others are a bit lacking. With that in mind, here's a small tier list of who I consider to be the best rearmed heroes to invest into. Let's go through all of them going over the best fodder to duplicate as well as talking about their strengths and weaknesses. Let's start at the very bottom with Alfred and Lyft. These are the best skills to duplicate with the two units in my opinion. Unfortunately, Alfred and Lyft have the worst of both worlds. They are both slow cavalry units, which means as heroes themselves, they don't excel in any of the game modes. And when it comes to fodder, they are both quite limited in what they can offer. Lyft can give out attack defense clash 4, but it requires a seasonal 4 star to inherit efficiently. Fortunately, his sword is very good on slow, bulky sword units, especially armors, and Alfred is an even at worst boat as his most premium fodder, Flow and Trace, doesn't have an easy way to be inherited. And crossbow attack speed is good, but not exactly what you want to duplicate in most situations, especially on cavalry heroes. One tier up is Gangla. Now Gangla is in a very interesting case when it comes to rearmed heroes. As an axe infantry unit, she has access to a ridiculous amount of premium fire to duplicate, as you can see. Some notable ones are about Astra, Guy-like reflexes, the tier 4 speed-based damage reduction skills, speed smoke 4, and so many others. This makes Gangla an amazing skill bank and duplicator. But the big problem with Gangla is that she herself is a terrible unit. She just doesn't fit into the meta anywhere. So even though she can duplicate fodder very well, you aren't getting a great rearmed hero for your investment, especially considering she doesn't even have a preference skill. Personally, I'm waiting for another rearmed sword, lance, or axe infantry to invest into. Hopefully one who is actually good. Next, let's talk about Aider. So Aider is a fantastic hero with a great weapon and preference skill but she's a beast cavalry unit, which have extremely restricted fodder options. Also, her premium fodder in Beast Sense 4 does not have a tier 3 option at the moment, so it takes the entire skill inheritance to get, which really sucks. Typically with Aider, you will grab the weapon or alarm attack speed, and then hopefully get a good tier 3 skill that you want to duplicate, such as the beast skills or a trace skill. You do have the option of heavily investing into Aider with premium skills just for the sake of duplicating, but she really won't use those skills that much because her base kit is pretty much what she wants for most situations. In the future though, this can definitely change, as intelligence systems could release Beast Sense 3 or other exclusive beast skills that you would like to duplicate. Okay, the next tier is full of heroes who are very good and have great arcane weapons, but inheriting skills from them can be a bit awkward at times. Let's start off with Rearmed Robin. Robin is our only rearmed armor and she comes with very valuable fodder for herself in the form of Hardy Fighter 3 and attack speed near safe. She's also an excellent near save unit for ether raids. The problem with Robin though, is that it is difficult to get four premium skills from her. At the time of this recording, there is no Hardy Fighter 2 available from a three to four star or from a grail unit. And the same could be said for all the different types of saves. This makes it a bit awkward as when you are building an armor unit, you are going to want at least one save skill and also typically a fighter skill as well. Typically what will happen is you will inherit Hardy Fire 3 and then one other good skill like the Arcane Weapon or maybe Special Fighter 4 or you will inherit a save skill and the weapon or some other easy accessible fodder. This doesn't mean Robin isn't amazing value but it does mean it's very difficult to get maximum value out of this unit. But once again, merging her up does give you an amazing hero. Fallen Krom is in an interesting situation as he has the best Arcane Sword for fast sword heroes but he's cavalry 
which means he can't duplicate all those amazing infantry skills or the tier 4 damage direction skills or finish or anything like that. So if you're looking to give Krom's weapon to an infantry unit, there are options, but they can be quite limited. Now if you're looking to build a speedy sword cav, there's some good options. First of all, Krom does come with attack speed clash 4, which is one of the best skills for melee cavs, only really being outclassed by the new flared sparrow from Brave Golvek. The major problem is that attack speed clash 3 is only on New Year's Pan, which is limited to a seasonal 4 star who costs you orbs. You can also grab speed snack 4 as the tier 3 version is easily accessible on Kent, or infantry speed tactics because speed tactics 3 is easy to get as well. Those are both amazing skills, but they definitely aren't the best skills you want to duplicate. The best options are mostly limited to seasonal units like Flow Desperation on T. Ira or Low Speed Defense 4 on Summer Shez, and if you really want to go premium, you can even use Krom to duplicate the new Flared Sparrow as well. Krom definitely has some great options, but just mostly for cavalry units. The top 4 rearmed heroes have to be Alchrist, Ophelia, Tana, and Ingrid. These heroes are perfect for skill duplication. You have an insane amount of options to choose from, so let's start off with the oldest rearmed hero, Ophelia. Ophelia is a fantastic unit to duplicate skills with because she naturally has Special Spiral 4, which is one of the most meta nuke skills in the game at the moment. This means you don't really need to inherit as many skills on her, as you will always want to take Special Spiral 4 on every single inherit. When it comes to Ophelia herself as a unit, she is a bit underwhelming due to not having a preference skill, but she is usable. Like I mentioned, there are a lot of options for Ophelia, depending on who you want to build. One of the easiest and most orb efficient options is to sacrifice a Brave Soren to Ophelia. It will let you duplicate Special Spiral 4, Magic Null Follow-Up, Times Pulse 4, and Flare, and it only costs one 5 star, which is insane. Of course though, Brave Soren is ridiculously powerful, so maybe don't do this if it's your only copy. And also, Special Spiral 4 and Magic Null Follow-Up do compete with each other for the same slot so you can go with a different 4th option if you prefer. Alchris is our newest rearmed hero and easily one of the best as well. First of all, he is a lot of premium fodder naturally. His weapon is fantastic for fast archers, and you can also pick up Deadeye alongside the new Flash Sparrow skill, which is really strong, and you can even get Defense Rise of Smoke 3 if you want. In this case, you may only want one other skill to duplicate, and then you can have an entire kit for any archer. But you also have the option to go for a lot of other premium skills, like duplicating Attack Speed Hexblade from Legendary Yuri, this lets you sack one very premium unit, but then every Alchris merge will let you have that ridiculous valuable fodder again. Personally, my plan is to duplicate Flash Sparrow, Low Speed Defense 4, Physical No Follow Up, and Attack Speed Unity to make Legendary Alm and Ascended Joshua even more busted. But as you can see, there are a ton of options, and many of them are free to play friendly. And the best part is, Alchris is an insanely good nuke that is definitely being slept on at the moment. This guy hits like a truck. So merging him up and giving him fodder will only make him better. Okay, our final two heroes are both rearmed flyers. Let's start off with Tana. Tana introduced one of the most powerful skills in the entire game, Guidance 4. So when you're going for skill duplication with Tana, I highly recommend picking that up if possible. She also has other great fodder like Deadeye and Attack Speed Unity, which are both highly desirable. One of the best options though is to sacrifice an Ivy to Tana like I did, as it can give the flyer both powerful options of Guidance 4 and Soaring Guidance which is extremely meta, especially in summer duels. Because Guidance 4 is so good on flying support units, it's also exceptional on flying dancers. So inheriting things like Wings of Mercy 4 or Firestorm Dance 3 can be amazing for duplication. Also, Tana herself is a very good unit with her massive warping and of course her amazing support in Guidance 4. And our final rearmed hero is Ingrid. Now we've already used Ingrid as an example in this video, so you should have an idea of what kind of skills she wants, but you can always duplicate some other skills as well to help with other roles. Arcane Lewin is a very, very good arcane weapon, so I don't blame you if you want to give it to an infantry unit, but in that case, make sure you to duplicate other skills like Ruptured Sky, Distant Counter, or other things you might need. And just like in the example I showed you earlier, sacrificing a Tana is a massive investment that will pay back dividends. Personally, I stacked a Summer Ivy to Tana and then Tana to Ingrid, which probably seems like a sacrilege to some people, but it's proven to be an amazing investment for my account. Before I close out this video, I want to give a few warnings as well as show an example of how many orbs you can save with this duplication trick. My first big warning is to be careful of over investing into rearmed heroes. Typically you will want to give a rearmed hero 2 to 4 premium skills. The reason for this is because not every hero who inherits from that rearmed hero will want the same thing. For example, when I inherit skills from Alchris to Legendary Alm, he has no interest in Deadeye or the Arcane Bow, so I need to have 4 other good options for him. But in some cases, 
Like let's say if we were inheriting Alcris to Dorothy, well she wants the bow, that eye, and Flash Sparrow at the very least, so you don't need that much premium fodder on Alcrist. Just remember, the more 5 stars you invest into the rearmed hero, the less orbs you are saving overall with this duplication trick. I'm not saying you can't do it, it's very good for whales and dolphins who care more about skill variety and options over saving orbs. For our example of how many orbs you can save, I'm going to use the rearmed Ingrid example I used earlier. Okay, so for initial cost, we need to summon a rearmed Ingrid, Tana, and Summer Ivy. On average, that will cost 121 orbs for rearmed Ingrid, 119 orbs for rearmed Tana, and 110 orbs for Summer Ivy. Remember, both Ingrid and Tana can be sparked when their banners are rerun, which they most likely will be due to the popularity of Three Houses and the power of Guidance 4. Summer Ivy is sparkable, but unfortunately only for Fate Pass users, which is pretty rough. Also, if you go for these heroes on a legendary mythic banner, the average orb cost does go up, so that is something to consider as well. And then after the spark, there is no guarantee of getting these heroes, so be careful. All the rearmed heroes are very popular, so I expect them to be reran consistently throughout the years though. So when it comes to the initial cost, it will be around 350 to 400 orbs. It's a little more than a month's worth of orbs. But then every time you pull an Ingrid and Merger, you just saved 229 to 280 orbs. Because in order to summon all the fodder you would have needed to give a hero the same kit, it would have cost roughly 400 orbs. But instead, it will only cost you like 121 to 135 orbs on average. And you also have to consider that if you're sniping blue orbs while summoning for Ingrid on her Spark Blue banner, there's over a 50% chance to get another copy, saving you even more orbs. So if you end up plus 10 Ingrid, you just saved anywhere from 2290 orbs to 2800 orbs just to build up all your favorite melee flyers which is some insane value. But remember, this does not make free orbs. You are still spending orbs overall. This is just a great way to completely revamp old heroes or spoil your favorites. I want to make it clear, the math being exact is not my biggest focus. The math will highly depend on if you only summon on Sparkle Banners, or if you have Fae Pass, or just how lucky you are. Also, it depends on how many skills you end up deciding to invest into the rearmed hero. If you invest 3 or 4 premium 5 stars, the initial cost will be higher, but also the amount of orbs you will save as you merge up that rearmed hero and duplicate their fodder will go up as well. And the opposite will be true if you only invest 1 premium 5 star, as you wouldn't need to summon as many heroes to give out that kit. The other major thing you have to consider is the cost of getting the tier 3 skills. Some skills will only cost you feathers or grails, but others may cost you orbs if you're impatient. For example, Special Battle 3 is not free to play even though it is accessible on quite a few units. Personally, my advice is to wait until it pops up from a 4-star special rate, or it's available on a 4-star seasonal so you can get the fodder cheaper, at the very least. And with that, my guide on skill duplication is complete. I really hope this trick can help people save some orbs, and also allow them to give amazing builds to their favorites. Once again, please understand, this trick does not give you free orbs, and only invest in rearmed heroes who align with your build projects. You not just invest in rearm heroes for some possible value you may get in the future. Believe me, it's easy to get sucked in by all the crazy savings. But now I'd love to hear from you. Which rearm heroes are you planning to invest into? What kind of skills do you want to duplicate? And which type of rearm hero are you looking forward to the most? Personally, I want an infantry dagger really bad. As always, I'd like to thank my amazing members for all their support. And if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. This has been Oblivion. I'll catch you all later.